Today is Thursday, October the 3rd, 2024. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how I trade options on the S&P 500 index. The symbol is SPX, and I call this system buy low, buy high. So this is all about buying options. It's not about selling options. It's very simple and it consists of the four points that you see here. So step one is wait until the market has been open for 15 minutes. By the way, I'm in the central US uh, time zone. So any uh, times that you see displayed on my screen are in central US time. Uh, after the market has been open for 15 minutes, it has been moving around in that first 15 minutes and so it has established a low of the day and a high of the day so at 8 45 central i start looking for trades i monitor the level that spx is currently at and when it falls below the low of the day i will buy a call option on spx and i try to get into the strike price which is closest to what the new low of day will be then i try to get out of the position once i'm in it for a dollar of profit so you fall below the low of day you buy a call you immediately try to get out of it with a profit of one dollar on the other hand if SPX rises above the high of the day. I buy a put. And then once I'm in that position, I try to get out of that put by selling it back to the market for a profit of a dollar. As far as the risk management is concerned, this I think is the trickiest part of this strategy. What I'm currently doing is if a position starts going against me, and the value of the contract that I bought drops by $5, I will exit the position. So let's just say, for example, if I bought a contract for $10.50, if the value of that contract drops to $5.50, so that would be a $5 loss, I'll just give up on the trade and accept that it's a, a loss. I'm trading in lots of five contracts and my personal view is that if you had $20,000 in your account, that would be appropriate for trading one contract because if you go with the uh, $5 risk management, you would be losing $500 on that trade that went the wrong direction. And $500 is only 2.5% of a $20,000 account, which I think is very manageable and reasonable. So that is the system. There is nothing else to the system. It's all right here on the screen. Uh, but there are some frequently asked questions that I'd like to address. So first question, does it work with SPY, ES futures, micro ES futures, XSP, etc.? One commenter out the blue five said that he was able to tweak it and use it with SPY. SPY is one tenth the size of SPX. Now, I don't know how many trades Out the Blue 5 has made on SPY using this system, so I can't comment on that, but at least there is a report out there that you could use this on SPY. But I want to emphasize that personally, I have only used this on SPX. What hours can you trade it with? I have seen that the very best trades are coming in before 12 central. In fact, probably the best of the best come in before 11 a.m. central U.S. time. 
so just overall, probably the first two hours, two and a half hours is the best time to use this. As we get later in the day, uh, it seems like the movement of SPX is different um, and you have to, if, if you want to trade later in the day, you really have to be paying a lot of attention to a number of factors, um, including the expected move, you know, like every day there's an expected move. As time is going by, the expected move is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. So if you had a trade, for example, that you got into late in the day and it wasn't going your way, you're really running out of time to be right on that trade. Um, so I, I think definitely the early hours of the day are better. Uh, why not automate it? I'm sure that the, uh, the exit could be automated. So once I'm in to a position, yeah, I could put in a closing order ahead of time, a limit order that says uh, get out when I reach a dollar profit. Not a problem at all. I'm sure the entry could actually be automated as well. I don't know how exactly how to do it on Tasty Trade, but I think if I were trading this on Thinkorswim, it would be very easy to put some kind of order in there that says once we break below a certain level of SPX, um, put in a market order to get, you know, the strike play, strike the uh, option closest to um, where we broke below the low of day or the strike price closest to where we broke above the high of day. I'm, I'm pretty sure that can be automated on thinkorswim, even on the, the entry. But just focusing here on the exit, I don't want to put in an order to exit my position until I actually see a dollar of profit on my screen. Because as I'm sitting there watching it, I don't push the button until I see at least a dollar. So it means that, you know, say I'm looking at a number on the screen where if I were to press the button and send the, the limit order now, I would have a 90 cent profit, but that's not what I want. I want at least a dollar profit. It could be that while I'm looking at this number and it says I could get out with a 90 cents profit, the next tick could be 50 cents higher. And so now I could actually get out, you know, with a uh, $1. forty profit or something like that. And so my point is when I see that I have at least a dollar, I press the button. But sometimes at that point, it could actually be a dollar ten or a dollar twenty or a dollar thirty. And so I don't want to automate exactly a dollar profit. I'd rather just watch the screen and when I get close to a dollar profit or sorry, when I when I reach a dollar profit or more, click the button. So like the dollar for me is a minimum, it's not a maximum. And if you try to automate it, I think you're locking yourself into a dollar profit or some set amount of profit. And that's not what I what I want. I just look at the dollar as a as a minimum. Okay, so maybe there'll be some other frequently asked questions in the future, but these are the ones that seem to come up uh, pretty often for for now. All right, so switching over to the, the platform, uh, I just wanted to uh, recap what happened yesterday. So this is Wednesday, October the 2nd that we're looking at here. These are, are the trades that, uh, that I placed yesterday. Yesterday, I think, was what I would call the perfect day for this strategy. Um, why do I say yesterday was a perfect day? The reason I say that is because, number one, there were four trades. There are eight, eight transactions here, four entry uh, four buy to open and then four sell to close. So eight total transactions that represents four uh, trades, an entry and an exit for each one. They were all four trades profitable. And furthermore, look at the time between the buy to open and the sell to close. First trade opened at 9.03 a.m. Again, this is central US time. So the market had been open for 33 minutes at that point, but I had been monitoring 
for my first trade since 845. So it took 18 minutes before I before SPX, uh, let's see, was this a put or it's a put, before XPS rose above the high of the day, that took 18 minutes. When I saw it go above the high of the day, um, I bought the put. Now, look at this. The sell to close in that position was two minutes later. All right, let's look at the next one. So this uh, next trade was another put, so it, it made another new high on the day. I got in at 9.17, and I was in that trade for only a minute. Got out at 9.18. Next trade was a, another put, so it made a new high on the day. Got in at 9.19, so this is at the same in the same strike even, 57.05, just like the one previous was in 57.05. But again, um, SPX had made a slightly higher new high of the day and so it didn't go so high that i had to go up to the 5710 at that point i was still in the 5705 but it did go up a little bit higher i got into that trade at 919 so sort of right back in and out two minutes later at 921 and then the fourth trade of the day got in at 949 again it was a put and got out at 952 three minutes so two minutes one minute, two minutes, three minutes. And, uh, you know, so like the last trade of the day, the market had only been open for, what, an hour and 22 minutes, and I was done for the day. So I do think that, that you know, just as a general trading principle, you wanna limit your exposure to the market as much as you can because you know, like the more you trade, um, the more you trade, the more you have exposure or risk to the market. So what we're trying to do in this trade is we're trying to use insurgent tactics, guerrilla tactics. We want to, you know, start our operation, make a quick hit, and then get out of there. Um, and, and that's it. So, so this is, I mean, the only thing that could have made yesterday a more perfect day was if instead of having four successful trades within that same time period, <laughs> if we'd have had maybe, you know, twice as many or three times as many, because obviously we'd have that much more money if they were all winners. But yeah, this, this is absolutely a textbook example of what we're hoping for and dreaming for with this um, with this strategy. Uh, yeah, okay. So I have set up the platform here so that I don't need to use any charts. Uh, you know, there's no indicators, so there's no charts. Um, but what I've done in the platform is I set up um, this left-hand side here to be able to show me the current high of day and low of day. And I have that on page two of my, my left-hand side view. And so that's what this is. It's currently 8.38, so the market's been open for eight minutes. SPX is moving around. It's uh, already put in a low of day at 56.92.90. It's put in a high of day at 57.02.37. And so in another seven minutes, at 8.45, I will start looking to see, well, where is SPX trading? The current value of where it's at is right here. Where is it trading relative to the low of day and high of day? I don't care what it's doing between the low of the day and the high of the day. The system says, wait until it breaks below the low of day, buy a call, or wait until it breaks above the high of day, buy a put. Um, all right, so I think that's all there is to say. Um, three pieces of information are needed to trade this. Low of day shown here, high of day shown here, current value shown here, and that's it. Um, I will say though that on the Tasty platform, because there is this alerts feature that you can set up, uh, I've been using this recently. So 
what I what I so that I don't have to look at the screen. I mean, I'm I'm near the computer, but um, I set this up to where I put in an alert. Like, let's say, okay, right now, let's just say that this remains the the low of the day by 8:45, another five minutes. It doesn't, you know, that's but at 8:45. Let's just suppose this is still the low of the day. All right, so this is 56.9290. So I want to get an alert so that I look at the computer and start paying attention to what's going on. If it hits 56.94, let's say. So if we're less than 94, well, we're less than 94 right now, so it would trigger immediately. Okay, let me use the, the other example. Uh, it's further away from the high of the day. So the high of the day is 5702.37. So I need to start looking at my computer and monitoring whether or not it's going to go above that by the time, say, it's getting to maybe around 5701. So I'll come in here and I'll set the alert at 5701. And I'll say I want to be alerted if SPX is trading at a level that's greater than 5701. I cl click Create Alert. And then I'm going to get a chime sound and also it's going to um, buzz on the Tasty Trade mobile app that I have on my phone. And it's also going to send an email if it does that. Um, and so, you know, when I even if I'm not right next to the computer, if I hear that chime or if I and somewhere else and then I, I get the notification on my phone, I can then come look at the computer or look at the phone, see what's going on, and then, you know, put a trade on if it actually does exceed the high of the day or falls below the low of the day. All right, so that's enough chatter. Uh, only four minutes here are remaining until uh, this system gets activated and it's time to start looking for a trade. So I'm just going to pause it here until that point, and uh, I'll come back here in about three minutes. All right, so just seconds away here from flipping to 845. There we go. All right, so now uh, that 845 is, is here, um, I start looking for trades. And by the way, I'm only on the zero DTE. So I'm looking for a break below the current low of day, which is what, 92.07? So if I if we do get a break below 9207, I am going to get into the 90, the 5690 call. So I'm queuing that up. I'm going to put five contracts in here. And uh, it looks like we might go down there right now. So let's see if it happens. I'm not going to push the button until I see something below that 9207 though. The reason why I'm, I'm taking this uh, 5690 is because when it does tick below 5692.07, we're going to be closer to 5690 than we're going to be to 5695. So just dancing around it here, it'll probably tick below. Okay, that, that's it right there. All right, so filled. So I'm in. Okay, so I got filled at what, 1670? So I want to get out at 1770. I won't push the button though until I see 1770 on the screen. And as I was saying before, the reason I'm not going to push the button until I see 1770 is because. 1770 would be a one dollar profit, but maybe I'll get even better than 1770. There it is. There's 1770. So trying to get out there. So the order is working, not filled. Because it's a working order, I fully expect that when it does get filled, you know, it's a limit order at 1770. I should get filled exactly at 70. Meanwhile, I'll just take note here that the new low of the day is 91.70. Uh, 65 looks like 
So if this keeps dropping, I'll start paying attention to possibly getting into the next uh, level down, which would be the 56.85. Really though, an even safer trade probably would be to let even more separation go by, like all the way down to like a 56.80. Of course, by that time, the trade that I'm in right now at 56.90 will be in a bit of trouble. Nevertheless, um, that is something to, to kind of pay attention to. So basically, I'm not against going in at 56.85 or 56.80, but I think allowing 10 points of separation is probably better than allowing only five points of separation between an existing position and adding a, a new position, a second position. I am not trading more than two positions at a time, regardless of what state either of them is in. All right, so while I was just talking there, um, I got filled. So the activity tab shows here I got filled at 1770. Let me flip this uh, back to only looking at today's trades. Earlier, I was talking about what happened yesterday, but uh, I'll just show here the, the current trades for the day. All right, so... Um, Current low is at 91.38, so I'm monitoring to see if SPX is gonna fall below there. This puts me back in the 56.90. So I'll queue that up for five, uh, five contracts. And again, I'm just going to wait until I see it actually go below 138 or 56.90138 before I hit the button to send the order. There it is. All right, so I got filled at 1610, looking to get out at 1710. And when I see 1710 in this area, I'll push the button. 1710 or higher, I'll push the button. There it is. So see, that time um, I saw 17, it went from like 1690 to 1730. And so I waited until I, I saw that at least $1 before I put my order in. So now I got an order sitting here for six, 1730. That's more than a dollar profit. That would be a buck 20. Now the order is working. So I'm just gonna leave it here at 1730. And um, See if it gets there. Meanwhile, I take note here that the new low is 5690.72. So the next trade is going to be again at the 5690 level, it appears. So technically speaking, I really should be, you know, accepting, I mean, I would be fully justified in accepting 1710 as my exit instead of 1730, but I, I'm not inclined to, to move it down to 1710. I mean, if this trade gets into a lot of trouble, that's a different story, but I'm just going to let it hang out here and see what happens. But I'm still monitoring to see if I might get into a new position here because the current low is 90.35. And we may get down to a point where I could potentially get into the 56.85. Or it might drop even lower and that would let me have 10 points of separation between where we're at right now at 56.90 where the position that I have on right now at 56.90 and the position, the, a new position, potentially 10 points away instead of only being five points away. The only reason why I'm talking about the separation is because 
like think about it if the if the trade that I have on now starts going wrong and it it drops really low um, and I'm getting hurt pretty bad uh, that could be an indication that it's about to make a, a much larger drop lower in which case do I really want to be in the 5685 or would I rather be 10 points away at the 5680 probably 5680 would be better now again I'm not saying that I would never go in um, to the next adjacent strike but that is something at least to spend some time thinking about like what kind of speed are you seeing what kind of velocity are you seeing in the price uh, movement and does that tell you anything about um, uh, putting on a second position while your first one is still in trouble all right I'm observing here that the new low of the day is 89.62 so still in this uh, 90 position Remember my order is sitting out there at 1730. Uh, if I want to, I could drop it down to 1710, but as you see, that was not necessary because I'm out um, at 1730. So that's more than a dollar of profit. If I had tried to automate that and just say, I want to get out at a dollar of profit, I would have got out at a dollar of profit. Whereas in this case, I was able to get out at a, uh, a buck 20. So, you know, 10 cents here, 20 cents there, and pretty soon you're talking about real money. So that's why I'm, I'm really not inclined to try to uh, automate the exit. All right, so with this new low at 5689.62, um, I mean, the next trade to make if we breach that would be back at that very same level of 56.90. Now this is not part of the system. It's not anything that I would call official, but I have to say that, you know, like I have this thought running around in my head that maybe it's not such a good idea to go back to the well, you know, three times um, at the same strike level. So like the closest strike to a breach of 89.62 right now would be 5690 but what I'm saying is you know I already have two trades like both of the trades that I've made so far were here at 5690 now I guess that's because the index is running into some resistance at that level or something who knows but like is you know a third time if 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 I get into that position a third time I don't know like my gut is telling me, my gut is telling me just let it go past 89.62, maybe all the way down below 87.5 so that I could justify uh, getting into a lower strike um, at 85 instead of, or yeah, at 85 instead of going back to the well at 56.90. Okay, anyhow, this is speculation and, and talk. Meanwhile, I need to be paying attention to the index. So the index is here around 98 and we're actually getting close to the high of the day. So I don't know, for all I know, we've, we've already put in the low of the day at 56.89. I mean, like the absolute low of the day. I need to get ready for a breach above 57.02.37. If we breach 57.02.37, we're probably gonna tick higher than 57.02.50. And in that case, the closest strike would be the 5705. So I'm queuing up my ticket here and I'm going to get into the 5705 on a breach of 5702.37. Technically speaking, let's just say it did exceed 5702.37 and it ticked, you know, by 0 0.01 above that and it went to 5702.38 technically speaking the closest strike would be the 5700 but you know i think um most likely it's when it it breaches 5702.37 it's going to go higher than that um it'll probably go higher than 5702.50 and if it does that which is i think pretty Pretty likely, um, the closest strike to that breach would be the 5705, not the 5700. So, 
Let's see how it plays out though. I think I had an alert set for 5701, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, there it is. <clears throat> of course, in this case, I don't need it need it because I've been sitting here blabbing. All right, looks like we're about to hit the high of day and exceed it. So I won't push the button to send my order until I actually see it exceed, and it did. So I'm sending the order. All right, so filled, where did I get in? I got filled at 16.10, so I'm looking to get out at 17.10. And it is still motoring higher here. So under my risk management, I got filled at 16.10. My risk management says get out at uh 1610 minus 5 which would be 1110 and again my profit target here is 1710 and if i see that on the screen i'll click the button there it is and filled all right so i mean we're three for three here um we have <laughs> traded this literally for 14 minutes um, I've got a profit showing on the date of 1650. You know what? I'm done. I mean, like why keep trading? Uh, I've used my guerrilla tactics, my insurgent tactics. I started the operation. I got in, I made three quick hits. I got out like this is a successful operation. Um, I, yeah, I could sit here and keep trading if I wanted to, but like, why would I do that? Um, just as easily as money was made today, money can also be lost. Um, yeah, I, I mean, like I'm done. So that's a, that's a wrap, uh, for today. Um, and, oh, this is a good time to talk about another frequently asked question that I just thought of. Um, what about news? Now, if I'm not mistaken, tomorrow is the day when the, excuse me, Bureau of Labor Statistics is going to report the non-farm payrolls. And if that's true, uh, that is a major news event. So someone asked me, are you avoiding days with major news events? And my answer is no. Now, um, I think it could be very wise to avoid major news events. Um, it, it makes a lot of intuitive sense to me that avoiding days with, I guess, what are called red news, you know, on Forex Factory, it shows a little red folder icon next to the, uh, or red icon next to the news events on the calendar. Um, I, I think if it's a, a red news day, then yeah, it, it makes a lot of logical sense to avoid trading. Um, but on the other hand, if I never try trading the system on red news days, which actually I have, um, I, 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 my point is like, I, I would rather not have a rule that says avoid trading on news days. If <clears throat> trading on news days has no effect on anything whatsoever. I mean, if you can make money on a, on a red news day, why stay out of the market? All right um, now, if, if I found that I consistently was losing money on a red news day because these heavy news events were um, causing the market to soar or to drop like a stone, sure. But uh, I don't really feel compelled. Um, 
I don't feel compelled to avoid news days. So tomorrow, NFP day, um, if that's the case, I am going to just be trading normally and um, I'll see what happens. So I, I totally understand somebody who would say, hey, I'm not gonna trade on a day when a big news event is coming out. And um, I think you can only help yourself by doing something like that. Um, it can only be a good thing in the grand scheme to not trade because any day you not, you're not trading, you are not losing money. And you know, like we don't wanna lose money. But uh, on the other hand, um, yeah, I, I think it's probably for the best and, and maybe even just for demonstration purposes if I just stay in the market and forget about the news and then uh, other people can observe what happens and either decide not to do what I'm doing or conclude that, yeah, maybe it's safe to trade on a red news day. All right, so that's it. I'm out and um, we'll see what happens tomorrow.